What an eventful Sunday for Tesla stock investors. We have a lot of breaking news for Tesla, including Elon Musk yet again suggesting Tesla stock could one day reach a $5 trillion market cap. In today's values, that would be over a 10x. So to 10x from here, it would only take Tesla's market cap to about $4.68 trillion, which definitely sounds a lot more doable than when you were at a trillion dollars. We also have Tesla lowering the outright buying price for full self-driving. This should be some good news. I'll elaborate on that here in this video. And we have Tesla cutting prices in China and Elon Musk explaining why Tesla is cutting prices, which I find very interesting. All of this and much more in today's video. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel and let me know what you think about this down below in the comment section. All of this comes at a very interesting time where Tesla reports earnings this week and they are going to have a lot of explaining to do. But let's jump into this video with your first bit of breaking news today. Tesla has cut prices in China for the Model 3 and the Model Y by 4 to 6%, while the imported Model S and X were reduced by as much as 22%. Good thing you don't sell a lot of Model S's and Model X's in China. Now, these recent price reductions, the ones that we seen yesterday for the US with the Model Y, Model S, Model X, and the ones that we're seeing today over in China, they are going to have likely a negative impact to Tesla stock. But you have to wonder just how much bad news is already priced into Tesla. Tesla like is this going to cause another five plus percent drop or is this like a one or two percent drop because you've already priced in so much bad news Tesla stock is already trading in the 140s a price that was to be quite honest unimaginable for a lot of people just say a couple of months ago now Elon Musk did take to X to kind of explain what's going on not in that much detail because I'm sure we're going to get more details and nuances of what Tesla's doing on the earnings call at least I hope if you're if you want Tesla stock to go up right now you hope that will happen if if you want a better buying opportunity well you want Tesla stock to fall but here is what Elon Musk says about the recent price reductions Elon Musk writes on X other cars change prices constantly and often by wide margins via dealer markups and manufacturer slash dealer incentives. Only a fool thinks the MSRP is the real price. Tesla's prices must change frequently in order to match production with demand. Now, I like to give Elon Musk the benefit of the doubt because I don't run Tesla. I don't see Tesla's orders on a day by day basis. I don't see what impact lowering prices or raising prices has on Tesla demand. Like maybe it does spur the order book for a couple of days. Who knows? You don't know. I don't know. The next guy doesn't know. Elon and the Tesla team know. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt to say they're going to make the best choice possible given the bad hand that they have been dealt from the Fed. And Elon Musk saying this is just a little bit more clarity to what they're doing, okay? Wall Street just wants clarity. I think Wall Street would feel a lot better about these price reductions if Elon and the Tesla team came out on the earnings call and said, rates are high, cars are unaffordable, we have to cut prices, blah, 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 to spur demand or fill the order book to match production. But when the Fed starts to lower rates and payments become cheaper, we are going to raise prices again. I mean, that would be like great news for Wall Street because Wall Street interprets these price reductions as permanent, as forever. Prices are never going higher again. And hopefully that's not um, the reality of the situation because where rates are right now, it's, uh, it's pretty unaffordable to buy anything. Like home, unaffordable. Car, unaffordable. Credit cards, unaffordable everything that has to do or anything that has to do with lending is just ridiculous be it let, let's just be honest doge designer here on x he shares this voiceover from elon's past earnings calls where elon says i have very high confidence in the long-term value of tesla i really see a path to 5x maybe 10x increase in the value of the company elon musk comments and says lots of work to achieve that 
But yes, Tesla has dropped the price of FSD to $8,000 from $12,000 in the US. Tesla has also gotten rid of enhanced autopilot, which was $6,000. So making things a little bit more simple here, forget the enhanced autopilot. You might as well have just bought FSD to, to begin with. And now it's only $8,000. This looks like they're kind of matching the, uh, well, not one for one, right? Because FSD would have went to $6,000, but kind of matching the monthly payment now to FSD. And I think this pricing makes a lot more sense, right? Instead of buying FSD outright, you're going to pay a little bit more on a long-term basis for the subscription, right? If, uh, if FSD was $12,000, right? And they reduce it down to eight and the subscription was at 200, they reduced it down to a hundred. Well, it actually makes a little bit more sense now to just go ahead and uh, buy FST outright. But the subscription is probably the better business model for Tesla's business long term. Something that the markets will want a lot of clarity on is what does the FSD take rate look like for Tesla's now that the free trial is almost ending? And that's why I have been paying attention to full self-driving Google Trends data recently. And well, what you're seeing today is pretty dang good. You recently, well, I, I, sh I should mention, prior to the free trial, you were sitting anywhere between 10 on the low side and 20 on the high side for full self-driving search trend activity. Uh, this is for 2023. You can take this back to 2004 to the present day. And it, yeah, you've, you kind of just trend in this range, right? 10 to 20s, right? In, in that area. Now let's zoom this back out to the last uh, 12 months. And you shot pretty much straight to 100. You recently came down to 41, and now you're back up to 58. Now, I'm not exactly sure if if this jump, I presume, is because Tesla's lowering the, lowering the price, and maybe people are just outright buying it now. That is a possibility, but we don't have any clarity. The point is, the take rate will be higher, and we will know this. If Google Trends data stays higher than it was before, in between 10 and 20, if you can stay between 30 and 40, that's a pretty strong sign that the take rate is likely higher now for full self-driving and more people owning full self-driving, more people talking about full self-driving, while it likely means, again, the take rate is higher. So Tesla lowering the price right now is probably a pretty dang good move, just like lowering the subscription price per month from $200 down to $100. And again, you can see if you take this all the way back to 2004, uh, FSD search trend activity is exploding. It's now at 100. So relative to what you have seen any time in the past years, full self-driving is by far, by far, uh, more searched about today than before, like by a long shot. And that's really to be expected, but we want to see where we kind of base out at, especially after the free trial is over with. And if you currently own Tesla's enhanced autopilot, upgrading to FSD will now only cost you $2,000 in the US. Harry Black writes on X, and, and he's a pretty good gauge of, inve uh, not investor, but big money, um sentiment around tesla and and what kind of changes wall street is making he says we have cut our tesla earnings estimates and price target to reflect this weekend's tesla price cuts in the u.s slash china we see little or no volume growth as a result of the price cuts consistent with last year's experience as competitors match tesla's price cuts we expect wall street analysts who follow tesla to do the same tonight and tomorrow also worth mentioning is tesla reports earnings this week on tuesday in after hours we have a special edition for this channel special video coming out later tonight at 8 p.m to go over my exact expectations and probably the last time i'm going to address tesla earnings before we actually get to earnings in a in-depth kind of way because i think we kind of understand what to expect what's going to be good what's going to be bad but um yeah just a couple things we need to talk about 
tonight at 8 p.m. So stay tuned to the channel for that one. But coming tomorrow morning, you're not going to have much for earnings. Verizon, Cleveland Cliffs, some banks, companies that are really unimportant for the broader markets. So if we are going to get a bounce from this latest sell-off that we have seen, one of the more aggressive sell-offs in the NASDAQ that we have seen in a long time, well, tomorrow could be the day. Keep in mind, though, I mean, your AI stock bubble just kind of started to pop. And if, well, there's a lot of uh, extra fluff still there, and if Wall Street is really popping the AI bubble, there could be more pain even to come on Monday. But if we were going to see a bounce, Monday looks like the day that maybe we do see that bounce. Tuesday, you have GM, UPS, GE, Pepsi, Lockheed Martin, Spotify, RTX, JetBlue, and Halle Burton pre-market. In after hours, Tesla, Visa, Enphase, Texas Instruments, Steel Dynamics, Chubbs, Baker Hughes, Weatherford, and Mattel. Wednesday pre-market, Boeing, AT&T, Humana, General Dynamics, Boston Scientific, and Biogen. Wednesday after hours, Meta, IBM, Ford, Chipotle, ServiceNow, Viking, Lam Research, Vale, and Align. Lam Research will be important for the AI trade. Lam Research did not get hit as much on Friday as your other AI stocks, so that one is going to be an interesting one. I do have a trade on. On it. If you guys would like to see those trades that I make almost every single day, check out that link down below in the description of this video. But a big theme of this week will be big tech earnings. If Meta comes in with bad earnings, Microsoft or Google, whew, look out below and uh, we'll know more coming on Wednesday. Um, and, and the problem here is really with big tech, I'm, I'm still not going to change my stance on this. These stocks are trading at or near all time highs still. Meta, Microsoft, Google. The expectations are way higher than the reality of what the earnings are going to be. So meaning these companies are going to come in with likely good earnings, but probably still fall. Now, if any of them come in with bad earnings, <laughs> yeah, they could fall a lot, a lot more. But hey, we'll have to wait and see. Thursday pre-market, you have Royal Caribbean, American Airlines, Newmont, Altria, Caterpillar, Southwest, Bristol, Myers, Mobileye, and AstraZeneca. Thursday after hours, Microsoft, Alphabet, Intel, Snap, Roku, Western Digital, Dexcom, T-Mobile, Gilead, and Ajinko Eagle. And Friday, um, some oil names, Chevron, as well as Exxon, Avi, Colgate, HCA Healthcare, Charter, ACM, Autoleave, Centene, and Ball that will report earnings. Your most recent AI investor sentiment survey showed the bears really picked up from 24% to 34%, neutral investors dropping from 32.5% to 27.8%, and bullish investors dropping as well from 43.4% to 38.3%. I imagine, given the selling that we've seen towards the end of last week, the bears are really going to pick up in the next survey that does come out next week. Your CNN fear and greed index is currently sitting at 31, and that's pretty fearful. Over on stock twits, Tesla's sentiment is sitting at 36 today, which is actually a little bit better than yesterday where you were at 33. So improving sentiment slightly but still pretty bearish overall. Message volume today is a little bit lower than yesterday, sitting at 59. Yesterday was 62. And the participation ratio today is high at 55. Over on Google Trends, if we look at all of the Tesla different vehicles, you're exploding, exploding higher with the Cybertruck. You went from 66 now to 83. That's insane. OK, eventually the halo effect will kick in and start to positively affect the rest of Tesla's brand. You're starting to see a lot more posts on social media, a lot more memes about the Cybertruck. And that's exactly what you want to see, even if some are making fun of the Cybertruck. Yeah, you, you know, people say they just got cut off by a refrigerator, you know. Uh, all, all, all those kind of things. That's positive for Tesla, nonetheless. Like they say in Wall, Wolf Wall Street. Any publicity is good publicity, or all publicity is good publicity. You can also see the Model Y is exploding, like literally exploding as well, going from 31 to 59. That's insane. Like the lines are dotted here because they're just getting so much um, more search activity about the Model Y. This could be following the price reductions that Tesla just made. I mean, that does make sense and well we'll see if that does translate into better deliveries even the model 3 going from 24 
to 29. That's a pretty big jump as well. The Model S going from 11 to 12, and the Model X going from 9 to 11. I think it's also important to remember that while your AI stocks and big tech really did not do well on Friday, you had more stocks than not actually doing well and in the green on Friday, believe that or not. The percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average was actually up about 4% on Friday. And the average stock actually went up, whereas big tech and AI stocks went down. And I think that's because you've seen so much, um, you know, cl clutter, clustering, I guess maybe is is a, a good word, into your AI stocks, your big tech. Those stocks are now selling off. Where do people put their money? Into other stocks that have been overlooked, potentially. And it wouldn't surprise me if you did see a sell down in the broader indexes here a continued bleed down, but your average stock starts to actually outperform and do better. Thus, I would not just write off Tesla in terms of, hey, markets are falling, Tesla's got to fall too. No, that's not what you've seen on Friday. You actually seen the average stock go up. 4% of stocks going above their 50-day moving average on Friday. That's substantial considering the NASDAQ was down. 2%. Option activity for Tesla over the past week uh, was, was pretty neutral, 48% positive order value, so a little bit more bearish, but overall kind of neutral. You had 5,349 orders, totaling $12.43 billion. Now, on Friday, you had 777 different orders. These are all option trades from big money, right? These are not retail investors. Keep that in mind. Totaling $800 million with a positive order value of 48%. And I will tell you, heading into Tesla's earnings this upcoming week, short sellers are in over their heads. They really need Tesla stock to fall. If Tesla rallies instead, they're going to be in big trouble. We'll talk about that in the next video. You do have short interest off free flow at multi-year highs, 3.88%, $16.13 billion currently in short positions, 107.58 million shares that are currently out on loan with cost to borrow fees sitting at about 10%, suggesting there was still a lot of shorting activity taking place on Friday. Now, Tesla stock on a technical basis, you want to hold this 147 level. You did hold this in regular trading. You closed at $147.05. In after hours, you did fall 15 cents. So you fell to $146 at 90 cents per share. Um, we'll see what happens if you do hold this coming Monday morning. That's that's a pretty good sign. That 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 would be good. But you do want to get above about 154 or so where this downtrending trend line is where you previously found a lot of support at multiple different points that would be support here one two three four five and if you can get above that that'll be great maybe it'll serve as support again or it could serve as resistance which it probably does serve as resistance now for a period of time i will also point out i have the bollinger bands here pulled up this yellow line you can see is the low band this is the 20 day moving average and this purple line is the high band now what this is basically showing on the low band is a two standard deviation move compared to your 20 day moving average so what this means is if you're under this low band or close to this low band then you're hit on a historical basis for the stock uh oversold or aggressively selling off likely due for a bounce right now you're under this lower end band. Now, what tends to happen and why I like to keep the Ballinger bands pulled up is you tend to revert back to your 20 day moving average over time, which is currently at $168 per share. If you do get an upside surprise on Tesla's earnings and maybe things are not as bad as people are currently seeing them for Tesla, then that would be the first level that I would target in an upside move. But don't be surprised if Monday is a pretty red day considering all of the price cuts that we've seen over this weekend. Nonetheless, hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. If you guys want to come trade with us live in real time, check out that link down below in the description of this video. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.